Okay, so I've only done one reaction to the Carpenters five months ago. We've only just begun. They were one of my favorite groups of the 70s, uh, which is my formative period of my life. This song only yesterday, I'm going to correct that today. I'm going to do a couple of reactions to the Carpenters, but only yesterday, this song came out in March 1975. I was a month away from turning 15. I was kind of an, <clears throat> excuse me, I was kind of an introspective kid. <clears throat> excuse me. So, but I was in love and this song hit me like an emotional tsunami. I must have listened to it a couple of dozen times in 1975. It um, is the middle period for the Carpenters who really hit it big in 1970 with We've Only Just Begun. And of course, Karen herself tragically died in 1983, but they kept putting out albums. But this was right almost at smack dab in the middle. <clears throat> and the reason I bring that up is this song, perhaps more than any song in the middle and late years, really shows they're still health healthy and putting out great music right now it shows how accomplished they are um, Karen with her voice this song to me is her consummate voice it shows what her contralto can do and for me she is the greatest contralto singer of the 20th of all time of all recorded music just exquisite control confidence uh, angelic sound she th there's just no there's no contralto voice that does what Karen does there's so much emotion in her voice it is the greatest in my book and then also Richard Carpenter he, he was the band he was the group he was the composer he arranged everything he was a, an arrangement genius and this song really shows that off just with this song, what he put instrumentally into this song, get this, the Wurlitzer uh, electric piano, the Fender Rhodes electric piano, the piano, bass guitar, guitar, drums, the tenor sax, and the oboe. Yeah, he put all of those in, into this. It kind of reminds me of the Bee Gees a little bit because they, they very much used a lot of classical music. But he was probably an even better arranger than the Bee Gees and their producers. I mean, he just was exquisite. He knew how to uh, get everything out of a song. And as, as most of you may already know, Karen didn't actually start out as the singer in the band. She started out as the drummer. <laughs> uh, Richard could play all the instruments, but um, Karen didn't want to, she didn't want to sing. They finally, uh, the way they made it big actually was because somebody actually, a producer did hear her voice and said, oh, I think I'm, yeah, I think it was it. AMG or something uh, that the label that said, oh, OK, yeah, we're going to take a chance with you guys. I love her voice. I really connect to her voice. So that's kind of ironic. It wasn't Richard's compositional abilities that got them uh, noticed as much. So and then, of course, uh, they asked her to go out front. She was singing uh, while she was playing drums and she said, no, I don't want to go out front. They finally convinced her to go out front. So this, I think, was the music video they put out in 1975 for Only Yesterday. It's an exquisite song. Starts out with drums, uh, which Karen is not playing. Um, who's playing? I don't know who's playing the drums on this. I should know that. But anyway, um, and this also shows her she's obviously, as you can see in this picture, she looks healthy. Um, the anorexia that she had later had, uh, was not apparent in this so i like that as well so this is them healthy accomplished and they're putting out one of the greatest songs of all time so let's start this at the beginning and listen to this extraordinary song You know what? Let's start over. I want to hear her voice again. Just the first time I heard this song, that voice where she comes in with that contralto on the low end of the contralto and how soothing it is and almost haunting in a way, her voice. Let's listen to that again. That's nice. Wow. Everyone must face their share of loneliness. The 
way she takes that up. In my own time, nobody knew time. The pain I was going through. And man, you believe it too. And waiting was all my heart could do. All right, I'll back it up 10 seconds. I just want to talk about how she continually moves up and down in that contralto. She starts out low and then she's and then she drags out, waiting was all my heart could do. She drags things out so lovely. Let's listen to that again. Okay, just stop it briefly. I'll take it back 10 seconds. But that, uh, what is, canastas? What are those things called? That, 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 that percussion little thing? Uh, I forgot about that being in this as well. Um, anyway, that, that's just sort of a brilliant little chirpy addition to this to give it a little bit of life to get, because it starts out pretty sort of haunting and almost depressing when I was sad and lonely. But you showed me the way to be happy. I mean, so, and that comes in with that. Another thing about the carpenters is they change pace all the time and they hesitate. Let you gobble up what you just heard. They hesitate for a half a second or a second. This is a, a character trait of um, Richard's compositional skills. So let's, let's listen to that again. I just love seeing them together healthy. sax brilliant I just want to say real quick that guitar that they bring in with almost a rock sound was actually controversial among, amongst a bunch of Carpenter's listeners. And even for me, it surprised me. And there's a big backstory on that as well. But coming in with that sort of mild rock sound there, riff, was controversial for them. But I think it works really well for this, giving it a little bit of an edge. Let's back it up and listen to that as well. So lovely. Life waits for a share it with me. The best is about to be. And so much is left for us to see. And when I hold you, baby, baby, it feels like baby, things will be alright. Baby, baby, your love's baby, free as a song, singing for
God, extraordinary. You know, I just there's, I like this video also uh, because it shows Karen happy, and that makes me happy. I mean, just the fact I'm trying to get this picture back up here. I like just talking about the video. I like that Karen reaches up and hits that the leaves as she's walking. That and just has that sort of spry little movement. I mean, knowing how her life tragically ended, it's really nice to see how happy she is. She seems to be very happy here and they're happy together. Um, perhaps one of the happiest brother sister combinations ever. And I love the little Japanese garden. Uh, just that's a nice little touch on it. And the there's just so much on this song. So brilliant, the composition. The, the lyrics are written by Richard Carpenter and John Bettis. But so the, the lyrics are great, you know, sad and lonely, but you show me the way to leave my past behind, leave all the past behind me. So it's really, it's really got a good message, a good upbeat message to it, which a lot of their music does. It, it's, it gets almost haunting and sort of about loneliness. And yet, you know, there's a happiness that, that blossoms out of it. That's really nice. And her voice does that as well. The drums on this give it a nice pace. The hesitations, pauses occasionally give it a nice sort of, you get to back off and, and enjoy it for a second. Um, it's just brilliant composition using the piano. The sax is genius on this. That little guitar riff, um, the sax and the guitar riff give it that emotional depth and texture, you know? And it's just, uh, Sometimes it's an overlooked song. I mean, it, it did actually sell more than a million records. And it went to number four on the Billboard 100 and number it was their 11th number one hit on the adult contemporary charts. Um, so that's great that they were so well recognized. And, uh, but it's, uh, hats off to Richard, but the Carpenters, <laughs> you just can't get past the fact that, that, Karen's voice seems to dominate. It's her voice that you really connect to. And Richard gives texture, background texture to it. And the background vocals by him and Karen throughout this song. And they overlaid that. Did a terrific job of doing that. But it's her voice. I mean, whenever I think about the Carpenters, yes, I think about Richard. But I think about Karen first. I mean, that voice of hers is... I mean, God, I know it's an exaggeration to say it's like a goddess voice or an angelic voice, <clears throat> which it's been called many times, but it really is. Um, and the thing that I find kind of interesting, almost ironic, is that she had such a difficult time with life and sounds like a difficult time with love itself. And yet when she sings, there's so much confidence in her voice. <clears throat> it is so genuinely calm and soothing and perfect. You know, it's like when it's those people who say they have stage fright, but then they get up on stage and you could, they're just extra, they're incredible, extraordinary, charismatic on stage. But in real life, they're introverts. You know, same thing with Karen. She evidently had a troubled way with her life, a difficult time with her life. But boy, when she opened up her mouth to sing, oh my God, just incredible. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. It's one of my, probably one of my top three by the Carpenters. And uh, it shows their, their consummate ability to express their souls and music. So yeah. All right. So that's it for Only Yesterday. And I look forward to y'all's comments. Okay, I'll catch you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye now.